So we're going to go over some major logic concepts today and continue on uh, with the truth tables. So I want to talk about a couple of words today. First one is called a tautology, oops, tautology, and the second contradiction. Now, these are two terms that go hand in hand. They are antonyms. They are extreme opposites, in other words. And simply stated, a tautology is a statement that is absolutely always true without any exception whatsoever. And a contradiction is a statement that is always false, absolutely, no matter what. And so we want to talk about what goes into each of these from a logic standpoint. So if I were to draw a simple Venn diagram, So I have A and I have not A, all right? Now, the first thing we have to understand is this is called the complement, the negation of something. Another word for it is the complement. And we, we talked about this last day. And the concept of complement is really, really huge. If we were talking about probability and statistics, then you're actually talking about an action took place, like, you know, I flipped a coin, or I, I was working with cards, or I was rolling the dice, or I, you know, I'm shooting the free throw, you know, I either make it or I didn't make it. But there's something where you could actually do a physical count. In this situation, we're not talking about sets, we're talking about statements. And sometimes that can be more confusing, but I think it's actually easier. See, I am here. The complement of that is, I am not here. The complement isn't a specific location somewhere else. The complement is just I throw the word not in there. All right. I flipped a coin and I got a heads. The complement would be I flipped a coin and I did not get a heads. But that would mean I flipped a coin and got a tails because a tails is the only other outcome. So this is also extremely important to understand when it comes to complement. If the situation is binary, binary meaning there's only two possibilities, then the complement, you don't use the word not, you just give the other. So the complement of on, you don't say it isn't on, you say it's off, <laughs> okay? It's just a little bit easier. The complement then, we're gonna, start, we're gonna start with really simple things, maybe things like numbers and such. But if I put these two together, if I said A or not A. Is there anything else? A or not A? I am here or I am not here. There isn't another alternative. That covers every conceivable thing. Okay. So if I said A or not A, that would be a tautology. That there isn't anything else it could be. I've covered everything. That, that is absolutely true. Those are all poss possible situations. But what if I said A and not A? Are there outcomes or even statements where I am here and at the same time I am not here? <laughs> A number is positive and at the same time it's not positive. No, that's, that's not possible. This is a contradiction. In fact, this is Actually, the formal definition of a contradiction is when something and its complement are both claimed to be true at the same time. Now, this is also a very, very powerful foundation for truth, excuse me, for proofs in general. Many of you have done proofs of this nature, sometimes they're referred to as proof by contrapositive or proof by contradiction. That's where you assume the opposite of what you're trying to prove and show that it leads to a contradiction. And the simplest way of thinking of this is a court of law. None of us here could prove our own innocence. Fortunately, we don't have to prove our own innocence. It is up to the prosecution to prove our guilt. Hmm. So what we do is we start by assuming not guilt. We don't start by assuming innocence. No, 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 no. That would not be it. The, the complement of guilty is not guilty. Not guilty includes innocent, but it also includes mostly guilty. You see, you're only guilty if you're completely guilty. So we start with the assumption of not guilt, go through all of the evidence and everything and show that it would lead to a contradiction of that assumption. And then that's how we get the guilty verdict in the end. But the, the way the court of law works is we, we use complements, guilt, not guilt. So if this is the situation, tautology or a contradiction in this situation, we like those. Now, not everything comes down to that, but 
from a truth table standpoint, here's what it would look like. I'm going to keep this as simple as humanly possible in the truth table. So I have the truth table. Let's say with our statements are uh, basically we'll just take the statement P. That's it. So we have P. We have not P. We have P or not P. We have P and not P. So this is a really short, simple truth table. I have four categories. Okay. In the first category, P is true or P is false. So therefore not P is false or not P is true. P or not P. Remember for an or to be true, only one of them has to be true, but there must be something that is true. I have, this is true, this is false. So the or would be true. This is false, this is true. So the or would be true. In the and case, remember, they both have to be true or everything has to be true for it to be true. I have true and false. That makes the and false. I have false or true. That makes the and false. So now we're done. This was a, you know, a bit simplified, I know. This column, everything is true. That means that this statement is a tautology. That's how it works with the truth table. In this column, everything is false. That makes this statement a contradiction. And it's, it's as simple as that. In a truth table, if you have a column of all truths, then that means it's a tautology because you've looked at every conceivable possibility and everything was true. Okay, now I'm only doing P. So obviously I've sort of overly simplified this one. So a lot of times we'll say, is, is a statement a tautology or is it not a tautology? Other times we're just trying to say, are two statements equivalent? That's the more common thing. <clears throat> So we're going to look at a couple of examples of this. Okay. Um, but before we do that, I'm going to give you a, a very, very powerful rule. Okay. A very powerful rule called De Morgan's Law. Now, De Morgan's Law is one of the more important rules in statistics and probability theory. We use De Morgan's Laws all the time. And so what I want to use again is a simple Venn diagram to illustrate. We're going to use De Morgan's laws with statements, but De Morgan's laws are also used with sets, and it's the same rule, which is kind of nice. So here's A, here's B. This part right here would be the overlap or the intersection. That's the and. If I look at everything in the two circles together, that's the union or the or. So in terms of a statement, if either thing is true, then the or is true. If it's a statement, they both have to be true for the and to be true. Now, De Morgan's laws deal with the following. If I said A and B, and I want the, the not, I have A or B, I want the not. How does this actually work then? These are two completely different statements here. What is the conclusion? Well, I want to do it from a simple picture here. So A and B, right now, A and B would be this part right here. Not A and B means everything in this rectangle except this right here. Now, how would I get everything except that? Well, that would be everything outside of a, now what's everything outside of A? Everything outside of A would be this. Okay, notice I did not include that. Everything outside of B would be the same exterior region, but would also include this portion of A. So if I said everything outside of A, or outside of B, now I have everything in here except this part right here. So everything outside of A or outside of B gives us this. Okay, so not A and B is not A or not B. These are not the same, they can't be the same. Okay, so that picture kind of helps understand that. Now, in the second case, 
I get a new picture. So in the second case, let's let's look at that. A little bit smaller here. All right, so A or B, A or B currently is this. I want not A or B, which means I want everything outside of these completely outside. That's what I want, the orange area. So how can I get that? Well, if I start by taking everything outside of A, and that would include the stuff in B, so everything outside of A. If I then said, now let's consider everything outside of B, then that would include this stuff here. Okay. Now, where does that leave me with? Well, if I wanted everything outside of A and outside of B at the same time, then outside of A would be all of this stuff, outside of B would be all this stuff, but I, they have to both be true, then I would only get the stuff that's outside of both of them, which would be not A and not B. The stuff outside of A completely, which includes B, the stuff outside of B completely, which includes A, but both of them have to be true. So they only share the outer regions here. So De Morgan's laws in terms of statements are simply these, which are really, really simple to use, but they're very, very powerful. So we wanna do some examples of, of using these with, with simple mathematical statements. So sometimes just starting with negations can help. So let's start with a statement like this. Okay, let's say statement P is Joe goes to the store. All right, let's say statement Q is that Joe, I don't know, uh, eats lunch. Joe's a busy guy. All right, so how would we state P and Q? How would we state P or Q? Well, P and Q would be simply and. Joe goes to the store and Joe eats lunch. Okay. P or Q, Joe goes to the store or Joe eats lunch. So then how do I state the negation of P and Q? How do I state the negation of P or Q? That's where De Morgan's law would come in. So I don't have to think too hard. The negation of P and Q. Joe goes to the store and Joe eats lunch. Joe's doing those two things. How could that not be true? Does he have to fail to do both things? No, he only has to fail to do one of them because an and means they both must be true at the same time. So the complement of an and is any part of the and not being true. So this would mean Joe did not go to the store or Joe did not eat lunch. Okay. Joe did not, one of those two were not true. All right. Now, if an or only needs one thing to be true, then the complement of an or would mean no part of it was true. Nothing was true. So this one would be, Joe did not go to the store and Joe did not eat lunch. Okay. And that's using De Morgan's laws just straight up.
fairly simple. Now, what if we did it from a, an algebraic point of view? Now let's keep this really simple. So if I said, make the statement, X is greater than 10. Okay, so first of all, if I make a statement like that, well, that's, that's fairly simple. How about X is less than or equal to P or Q How about P and Q? Hmm. Well, sometimes it helps to think of a number line. So in the first case, that would be this. In the second case, that would be this. So if I said P or Q, then what would that be? That would be X is greater than 10 or X is less than or equal to five. If we thought of this as intervals, we would say this is the interval from negative infinity to five inclusive union 10 to infinity. That's a good way of thinking about it. What about the second one? Well, the second one would be the empty set. There's nothing there. There is no and, there is no overlap. Oh, okay. Now, what about the negations? What is the negation of P? What is the negation of Q? Now, this is where we sometimes get a little bit of trouble with the algebra part. Is the negation of, is X greater than 10? Is the negation somehow involved negative 10? No. The negation of X bigger than 10 is X is not bigger than 10. So looking at this, I would want everything 10 or less. So the negation would be X is less than or equal to 10. In the second case, the negation of X is less than or equal to five would be clearly X is greater than five. And getting the inequalities correct in this case is really, really huge really huge. So now if I said, all right, what's the negation of P or Q? What's the negation of P and Q? So in other words, P and Q, you could think of as a contradiction in this case, right? It's absolutely impossible. There are no numbers that satisfy that. So a contradiction would be a perfect conclusion here. So not this. Well, right now we have the union of these two. What would not be the union of these two would be everything else. So that would be the parts between them. So this would be five to 10, open at five, closed at 10. Or in terms of an inequality, five is less than X, which is less than or equal to 10. That's basically the complement of the union of these two things. And that's a, a nice, simple way of looking at it. So what we're doing is we're saying using de Morgan's law, not P and not Q. So less than or equal to 10 and at the same time bigger than five, boom. Okay, that's kind of a nice way of looking at it. How about the next one? This says, I am less than or equal to 10 or, because de Morgan's law, or I am bigger than five. Hmm, aren't all numbers either smaller than 10 or bigger than five? Think about that. If I said you're less than this or you're bigger than this, when I put those together, that would give me the whole number line. Hmm. So this statement here would be all of the real number line, meaning every single number makes that true, which means that's also a tautology. Oh, so the complement of the contradiction gave us a tautology. That seems reasonable. Okay, that, that is actually a very powerful conclusion. So throwing those guys in there. Okay, so now we want to do some examples of how do we use some of the logic rules that we have developed to 
I get more ink on here, it gets harder to erase. All right, so let's suppose that I was simply asking the question, are two statements equivalent? So for example, let me, let me grab one here. I'm gonna find my place here. A handy dandy book right in front of me, here we go. So for example, if I wanted to know, is the following equivalent, Find my place again. P and Q or R is this equivalent to P and Q or P and R, my apologies, it's the light is not very good here. <laughs> is this a true statement? I'm giving you a hint, actually it is. It's a very powerful statement. How would I prove this is true? I can't do this by example. I can't do this using uh, number line examples. I can only prove the truth of this using a truth table. Now this one's gonna be pretty beefy truth table because I need to have a P, a Q and R and I need to have an and, I need to have an and, you know, or I, I gotta have a whole bunch of stuff in there. So let's start with, I'm at P, Q, R. I'm going to need Q or R. I'm going to need P and Q. I'm going to need P and R. And then finally, I'm going to need both of these together, P and Q or P and R. I think, oh, my bad, I, I left out that one. Sorry, I need, I need to fit in one more here. So, ooh, uh, this is gonna be tight. So I need right here, Q or R, and then I need the whole statement there. So P and Q or R. All right, what I'm gonna do to make it easier to read, since this is gonna be terrible, I'm gonna make columns each one of these. There we go. When you're doing a truth table in general, inserting columns is always wise because otherwise it's really difficult to tell what it is you're comparing. I'm, that is an entire statement. That is an entire statement. That's a statement. That's a statement. Now, what am I looking for in the end? On the right hand side, I've got this. On the left-hand side, I've got this. I'm looking for these two columns to be exactly the same. Now, what a lot of folks will do in this scenario, and I, I didn't, but it doesn't really matter in the long run, is they may choose to put this column second to last so you can have them side by side. That's, that's a really good thing to do in general because if, if the two columns you're comparing are side by side, it's sometimes just a little bit easier, but it doesn't make any difference. It's not going to change any of your conclusions. Now I'm going to show you a simple way to keep track of this. If we're in a stats class and I said, I'm going to flip a coin three times, what are my possible outcomes? Would you say, well, let's say I can have a heads, a tails, and a heads, or a, a tails, a tails, and a heads, or a heads, a heads, and a tails. Let's see, what am I leaving out here? I'm just randomly picking H's and T's. This, this is not a very good way of doing things. I may say something twice. I may miss something. What you usually do is go, well, no, head, 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 tail, head, tail, head, head, tail, tail. In other words, have a plan. And then I would do the same thing. I would go tail, head, head, tail, head, tail, 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 head, tail, tail, tail. That's what I would do 100% of the time. If we were doing ones and zeros, I'd do the same thing. We're doing P, Q, and R. I'm going to do the same thing. You see, the idea being, I don't want to miss anything. P and Q are each, excuse me, P, Q, and R are each either true or false. So I'm matching each possibility, just like with the heads and the tails. So my possibilities are true, 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 false, true, false, true, true, false, false. Kind of like heads and tails. 
false, true, true, false, true, false, 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 true, false, false, false. By having some organization and structure, I'm less likely to miss one or repeat one. Both of those would be bad. You notice there were exactly eight. That's two to the third power. That's not accidental. Now, when I go through here, everything I do is now automatic. You don't have to think. You're not calculating, you're just reading, but making sure you're reading ors versus ands very carefully. So Q or R, I'm only looking at these two columns. And since it's an or, for this to be false, they would both have to be false. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna be lazy. When are they both false? They're both false here. They're both false here. In every other case, at least one of them is true. Can't tell that I'm being really lazy. That was the easy way of doing it. Now the last statement says P and Q or R. So now I'm looking at these two columns and I'm looking at an and. See, I'm not looking at the or anymore. That was how I got these guys. So P and Q or R. For that to be true, they both have to be true at the same time. So when are they both true? They're both true here. They're both true here. They're both true here. And that's it. They're never both true again. So false, 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 false. And by the way, just a point of emphasis. <laughs> Try to make your T's. <coughs> try to try to make your T's and your F's clearly distinguishable. I, I laugh because uh, I used to teach baby algebra, and I might ask true false questions, and you'd always get the students, you know, who <laughs> that was the ambiguous. You know, it's whatever you want it to be. Well, no, if you can't tell the difference between your T's and your F's, I won't be able to either. All right. P and Q. No, I'm looking at these two columns. For P and Q to be true, excuse me, for the P and Q, the statement to be true, both P and Q have to be true at the same time. Well, P and Q are both true here, but never again. So it looks like true, true, and then all the rest are going to be falses. False, 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 false. False, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, make sure I don't miss anything there. P and R. So I'm looking at these two columns. So when are P and R both true? Here and here, the first and third rows, that's it. And all the rest of the times, they are false. Now, finally, I am asking the question, P and Q, this column, or P and R, this column. It's an or. I just need to know when at least one of them is true. So when is at least one of them true? Well, here, 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 and all the rest are false. OK. Now we're done. Now we need to make a conclusion. We are comparing this column with this column. And it's a beautiful thing. They are exactly the same. That means that this statement here is true. If even one of the T's and F's differed, then this would not be a true statement. And sometimes we can take complicated expressions and say, is it true or is it not true? And here's the thing, I might have, you know, not P and not Q or this, you know, I have something really nasty, but I might be able to manipulate that, think of it like algebra, to get a different statement that perhaps is easier to work with. As long as I can show using a truth table that they are equivalent, meaning they have the same trues and falses, then I can use one in place of the other if it's convenient. See, De Morgan's law, not the union or not the or, right? Sometimes that's more complicated, but it's kind of like distributing the, the not into the statement might be easier. This is called the distributive property, by the way. You notice I had P 
and the or, so it was P and Q or P and R. Well, it turns out if I had made that the or and that the end, it would also distribute, it would look different at that end. So there's a whole series of rules. I'm gonna point, point out to you. In section 2.1, if you have a fifth edition, let me find it. If you have a fifth edition, it's on page 49. Um, I'm not sure, I don't have the fourth in front of me, but you can't miss it. It says all the logical equivalences. Do not memorize this, be familiar with this. Okay, it's sort of like in calculus when you're first learning your integrals, you want to write down all of your integration formulas on a piece of paper and have it nearby when you're doing your homework. So you're not constantly looking things up. It's the same thing here. You get really familiar with these rules so you know when you can and cannot say something. So as we're going to do our manipulation, we want to be able to justify. Hold on one minute. I'm going to get a paper towel here. <laughs> My board becomes increasingly difficult to erase. <laughs> Believe it or not, I actually have to wash this between classes because the ink buildup is tremendous. <clears throat> there we go, that's a little bit easier. Okay, so I've introduced some terminology today. Now I wanna go through some of the how-tos. Okay, so taking a couple of problems from the text, do a couple of simple homework problems. Oops, hold on a second, grab, make sure I'm in the right section there. There we go. Okay. Let's do the following. Let's write a truth table for the following statement. I can read this here. Not P and Q or P or Q. Okay. I want to write a truth table for that. I'm not going to compare it to something. I just want to write a truth table for that just to get the exercise. Now there's a there's only P and Q. But because of all of the stuff going on, there's actually going to be quite a few columns on this. And so a truth table in, in and of itself should never be difficult because there's no part of the truth table that requires you interpret. You're just reading. So when we do this, let's start with I've got P. I've got Q. I've got P and Q. I've got not P and Q. I've got P or Q, and then I've got not P and Q or P or Q. Now, sometimes it's hard to tell how many columns I need. I need something that has the entire statement here at some point, but I can't start with this. I need all of the individual pieces to build up to it. Now, what we'd really like to know, is that a tautology, a contradiction, or just something else? Now, how would we know? If my last column was all falses, then that statement there is a contradiction, which means there's no possibility all of this could happen at once, ever. If my last column were all truths, then it means that guarantees truth, no matter what your choices of P and Q are. Most of the time, you're going to be neither one, by the way. So... We'll do like we did before, we'll make columns. Now, the number of terms that I need, I only have P's and Q's. So that means I'm only going to have at most four rows because P and Q, two to the second power. In the previous one, we did P, Q, and R, we needed eight. So here, this is true, 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 false, false, true, false, False. These are the only possibilities. Okay, make sure we've covered all of our bases. Now, once the order I did this is not required, it's random, but I don't do it in a random order. I do it in a very logical, 
you know, fashion, kind of like if I was doing the heads tails thing. If you're randomly putting your T's and F's in there, again, you may miss one, you may double count something. This is the and. So when is and true? When both of these are true. So true, false, false, false. Not the and. So now I want to do the not of this. So I don't need this anymore. I just need to look at this. So that would be false, true, true, true. Okay. P or Q. Well, P or Q is going to be true in every one except for the last one. So this is going to be true, 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 false. <clears throat> now, finally, I'm putting this or this. And you notice there are no double falses. So folks, we have a tautology. It is always the case that not P and Q or P or Q. <laughs> that sounds kind of crazy, but that's, that's everything. Now, there's more than one way to manipulate this also. So now I'm gonna show you, we, we now realize this is a tautology, okay? Now we're going to do some algebra on this, and we're also going to give our justifications. And this is very, very important that we do our justifications. So I do not want you to memorize the rules and the justifications. I want you to be familiar with them. Okay. So I want to do this problem. And what we're going to do is algebraically manipulate this. So I'm going to say, I'm going to rewrite it and give myself a little more room here. In other words, I want to do things like using the distributive property and such. So I'm going to start. What if I expanded this? Hmm. What if I expanded this? How would I expand this? So I'd say this is equivalent to not P or not Q, or P or Q. Why is that true? This is true by De Morgan's law. I just applied De Morgan's law. So I'm gonna put by De Morgan's law. Now, what else can I do? I've gotten this, or this, or this, or this. Ooh, I can rearrange, right? If just think simply, if I said A or B or C or D, is that the same as D or C or B or A? Sure, A or C or D or B, sure. I can rearrange those all day. If I said A or B and not, you know, no, 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 no. I can't rearrange stuff when I start mixing ands and ors and nots, but these are all ors. So I can rearrange these all I want if I choose to. So what I'd really like to do is get the P and the not P butted up against each other. So what I'm gonna do is swap these two. So I'm gonna say, I'll write it over here now. So this is equivalent to not Q or not P or P or Q. And that's, believe it or not, commutativity. That's just, just like an algebra, right? The commutative, and they're all called law, commutative law. Now, we know in algebra that I can not only rearrange in an addition, I can regroup. If I have A plus B plus C, it's, it's A plus B plus C, or it's A plus B plus C. By regrouping, that's moving the parentheses, that's called the associative property. Can I regroup these? I want to regroup these as follows, or if you notice, all I did was move the parentheses. I didn't move the position. I didn't change the connectives. This is the associative property, just like in algebra. So this is called the associative law. Now, why am I doing that? Not P or P. Now we said earlier, I am here or I am not here. Well, that's absolutely always true. 
not P or P is absolutely always true. You're one or the other always. That's a tautology. So we write it like this. I just put a T, T for tautology. And by the way, you can group them any way you want. I can, I can group it like this. I do have to group somehow. And that is by, now, but what, what makes that true, okay, that, that something, uh, I'm sorry, that, that uh, something or, I'm sorry, something or its complement, that's what I'm trying to say. Something or its complement, okay, um, is called, actually, believe it or not, is called a negation law. It's because I'm using the negation. This is called the negation law, either to, uh, either to acquire a tautology or to acquire a contradiction, because I'm using the fact that I'm putting a negation with something. If I had said not P and P, we would have said that's a contradiction and it's still the negation law. That's not sure. Sorry, my, not enough copy. By the negation law. Yeah, I can't write today. Now I've got T tautology or, okay, tautology or. Well, <laughs> everything or Q. <laughs> In sets, think of this as the universal set or one thing, or tautology, it's always true or Q. Well, then it's always true because there was an or there. So that right there, it's called the universal bound law. It would allow me to write this now as not Q or tautology. Okay, um, it, it's kind of <laughs> it's kind of cool there because the tautology is always true. So tautology or something else, it, I'm still always true. I still have the universal set involved. Okay, um, so I call that that's the universal bound law. Now, where does that leave us here? Not Q or tautology. Well, that's exactly the same thing we just did a moment ago. I have something or everything. I'm pretty sure that means everything. And I'm gonna just, same reason. Now, like I said before, I don't need you to memorize all of the reasons. I need you to be familiar with them. So there's some excellent practice problems in the text where you can do exactly that. You can go through the process. Now, in this particular situation, I wanted to show you something. We did a truth table. We acquired a column of truths, which is what it means to be a tautology. It was true in every instance. Now, I took the same problem. When we looked at this, this is the most extreme different point of view we could look at it. I said, essentially, let's algebraically manipulate this statement until we come up with tautology. This is, you know, quite a bit more complicated because I'm giving reasons along the way. But the beauty is you can always do this. And here's the other thing. What if this was not a tautology? Then I can still do all of this manipulation. But at the end, my last statement might have been P or Q, or P and Q, or not P or Q. My last statement would have been something with P's and Q's in it if this had not been a tautology. And I still would have done all of the same steps. So let's look at something like that. I knew the answer was going to be tautology because we did it with a truth table. Boy. This is a workout, erasing this thing. I'm going to take another problem. Let's look at, can find the problem I want to do. All right, let's try another one. And oops, I'll do another one in the truth table format. Something, something big. We like big ones. All right. And find my place here. Here we go. We've got P and not Q and not P 
or Q. Make sure I wrote that down correctly. Okay. Now we can do this one of two ways. We can do this exactly the way we did it a moment ago, or we can do this using a truth table. It doesn't make any difference. Our goal is to say the last column, which would be the column that has everything in it, is either all trues, it's all falses, or it's something else. Okay? It doesn't always have to be that way. It doesn't, right? Everything is not a tautology, everything is not a contradiction. So let's do this once again using a truth table. All right? Now, this one I'm going to put on you guys. I'm going to help you set it up. You're actually going to do this one on your own from in a moment, but I'm going to help you set it up. So the setup should look like this. I've got P, I've got Q. Now in here, obviously I'm going to need a not P and a not Q. So not P, not Q. All right. I need a P and not Q. And if it helps, you put parentheses just so you keep them separate. I need a not P or Q. And I did not leave myself. I, you know, I'm going to squish this a little more. Sorry, <laughs> this is a little too, a little too cramped. Um, P and not Q. And then this one is not P or Q. There we go. Now, and then I need the whole thing up there. And then P and not Q and not P or Q. When you're doing this on paper, you usually have a little bit more room. So how many columns do we actually need here? Well, clearly I need a column for that. I'm gonna need a column for that. In fact, if you wanna do this, that might be more useful. So up here, here, I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different columns. Now I'm gonna give you guys a few minutes. So I'm gonna stop recording. I want you guys to all try this on your own. And I want you to fill this up. This, this might take you five minutes. But I want to fill it up and then let's see what we get as a group. And hopefully we all come to the exact same conclusion. So that was, that was really nice. What you guys did, I, every person who showed me, it was beautiful. So there actually is some structure and all of the structure is created in your choice right here. Once you fill in your T's and F's for P and Q, which by the way, how many ways can you do it? Well, any way you want, as long as you get all four possibilities, once you write these in, this is set in stone. It is unchangeable once you create the first. So I'm going to go true, 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 false, false, true, false, false. Now I can just almost race through. I just have to read things appropriately. So this would be false, false, true, true. This would be false, true, false, true. Now I'm doing P and not Q. So make sure I'm looking at the correct columns. I'm doing those two. It's an and, P and not Q. They both have to be true at the same time. And they're both true only in this position here. So then everything else is a false. Not P or Q. Make sure you're muted, please. Make sure you're muted. There's a lot of background noise there. Yeah, it's pretty distracting not P or Q. So now I'm looking at these two columns and since it's an or anything being true makes it true. So this statement is the only false right there. Everything else is true. And finally, I'm doing an and between these two columns here. And you notice there are no double trues. So false, 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 false. And we have our contradiction and it's that simple. I think most of you would find this a little bit simpler than doing the algebraic approach where we, we give the reasons. You need to be able to do both and you need to be able to, to do both comfortably. If this were an exam, you'd be giving the algebraic reasons, but you'd have the list of algebraic reasons right there. You know, you don't have to memorize them because things like commutativity, associativity, distributive law, De Morgan's law, you're going to know those inside and out because you're using them so often. Some of the more minor ones, you may not be as familiar. But one of the nice things is as we go through this course and we do different types of logical problems, we're going to do this 
with set, what's called set theory. We're gonna talk about set containment and when are two sets equivalent and equal. We're gonna do this with numerical things. We're gonna do this with statements. We're gonna do this with different forms of logic. And it always comes back to the same thing. We still have all of the same sets of rules all the way through the course. So that's a nice thing. Things, different contexts, same rules. We don't have to keep learning new ways of doing things. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stop now.